built, protected by Amsoil. With support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. Hi, I'm Dustin Whipple. I'm Vice President of Whipple Superchargers, and we're here working on the Lockjaw project. Uh, for Lockjaw, we actually built a, a kind of a one-off 3.8 liter front feed supercharger and a one-off inlet system for it. So this was a unique supercharger system where it actually has a front feed and the blower is actually inverted from more of the traditional designs that we had done in the 3.8 applications. So this has a shaft out the front and uh, the pulley, and then we have dual inlets to get the amount of air required for the power. Yeah, I mean, the diesel is really unique because we haven't done it very often. We did have an application years ago for the old Hummer, um, but that's when I was you know, very young and I've known Gail for you know, quite a long time um, and uh, just started calling and you know, kind of talking about what products we have and any way we can work together. Um, We've always had you know, a good uh, relationship and said like, if we can never work together, we want to, you know, just got to find the right project. And obviously the diesel is generally turbo, right? So not quite uh, in our wheelhouse, you know. We started testing on the, uh, on the dual, you know, the compound type motor with the big giant intercooler and big blower. So from there, I think we learned and said that we can really apply that information, but with the smaller supercharger and uh, hopefully we can make some product out of it, you know, in the end. But that, that's our goal is to make this some type of product, you know. We're used to throttle bodies, bypass systems, trying to get fuel economy, injectors you know, in the right positions. The main thing was just trying to figure out how to get as much air, get it as cool as possible, then the Banks team can do the rest. We did the, uh, on this one, we did the CAD work on the supercharger itself and uh, helped advise on the inlet, but uh, the team at Banks did a lot of the CAD work for the dual inlet and the manifold to uh, bolt our intercooler in there. I've kind of had every job here and uh, now I help run it. So it's me and my dad and my sister and mom. We all kind of, you know, take a little different jobs, but uh, you know, it's a family business and it's about 32 years or so right now. And uh, you know, still going strong and it just keeps going bigger and bigger. And, we don't know where the end is, but we want to keep pushing hard on it. One thing, just like what Banks did, we really prided ourselves on doing emission legal product. And uh, so part of that, of going to the you know, green initiative is that what we do is we still try to <clears throat> work within the rules and make sure that everything we do try to sell other than for racing product is going to be is legal. So that's you know, something that I feel that us and Banks both have really done well at compared to maybe some of the other people that are now you're seeing in the news getting in trouble. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah, this is actually uh, our uh, production 3.8 liter rotors that we use right now in uh, the uh, Mustang and a lot of race applications right now. And the, the Hellcat will be the next version of this rotor as well. So yeah, as of right now, it's a production deal. There's definitely some other versions coming, but for right now, it's a production setup. What we have today is basically all these ribs on the back side, so these pieces. And it's in blanks, so they're just uniform half-inch strips. So what I need to do is create drawings so we know that on pieces like this where it goes and overlays with the hinge overlays um, that we have the correct dimension and we can go in and just piece these into place and, and weld them in. So we're going to get all these prepped tonight and then hopefully the material will show up tomorrow and then we can go and weld this thing up and bring it over to Sean and get it on the truck because he wants it out of there and we want it back. Uh, so a couple drawings and then Eric and I will go out and, and start prepping all these guys. So right here we have our drawing of all the different sizes and quantities that we need. So let's get to cut. Uh, so I got all these cut out to the correct length. They're ready for Eric to chuck on to the mill and make our clearances for any other blades that might be in the way. Pure SEMA crunch mayhem. There's a little gear on here that matches up and meshes with the gears on this little handle that allows me to go in and unlock this guy and move my Z-axis, but perfect timing. These gears have completely worn down and this no longer does anything. Thankfully, we've got a backup Acromil, so I gotta go blast this one apart and uh, see if I can save myself here. Free. Now I can move it. This is a half inch by half inch piece of aluminum here. This is replicating my half inch width of the, the bar stock that I'm about to cut. So what I'm gonna go do is lock in my Z, or I shouldn't say lock in it, zero my Z at the top of half inch. So that way when I go and throw in the material, I just have to go down. If I start at zero, I gotta go down to negative 0.125 or negative one eighth. And I know that I've taken an eighth inch 
out of a half inch wide piece. Just barely touch off with my end mill. I don't care if I go a little bit over here. Better to go safe than sorry. Zero it in and then I'll go grab a piece and get set up for the first cut. So if you recall a couple episodes ago with Gail and the team, we discussed the design of the wheels for Lockjaw. So like Gail said, we started with this just basic eight window. Of course, that doesn't accomplish any of the goals that Gail just mentioned, which is to move air, to, to actively move air through the wheel. Through the rotor. Through the rotor and, and then out the wheel, yeah. And, and out the front face of the wheel, which isn't a new idea by any means. There were certain requirements that Gail wanted into the, designed into the wheels, both technical and aesthetic. Uh, the wheels need to be an eight lug. Yeah, eight on 180 bolt pattern, or for us carpenters, <laughs> uh, 7.086 <laughs> bolt pattern. <laughs> 180's nicer. <laughs> big windows so that the visibility of the big wheel wood brakes behind them can be seen. Airflow or air management uh, needs to be designed into the wheels to actually pull air out of the wheels, uh, causing a low pressure underneath the truck at high speeds. You know, since Logjaw is a patinaed truck, I wanted the wheels to be more nostalgic. Um, yet technical because from the outside it's just a patina truck which is cool but then once you pop the hood and look in like underneath the bed and all that it's highly technical and that's what Gail Banks engineering is all about and we got to get these things rolling no pun intended and get them on the, the machine out in my shop to, to get them out to bank so we can get this uh, this truck finished couple things that I've come up with is a slight, not necessarily a twisted directional wheel, um, but just a very slight directional wheel. So whenever it's sitting still, it looks like it's actually turning, not really, but it looks like it has forward momentum. Uh, especially this one, it's, this truck's all about performance and speed. So sitting still, I want it to look like it's already starting to get into motion. I think this, this one's gonna be a little bit too modern for the truck. Um, and you know, just the simple spokes, but uh, I'm kind of leaning towards this where it's got the window, bigger windows than this one. You know, this one's got the traditional kind of rectangular curved window windows. But this one, I'm going to fill, fill the opening as big as possible. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I just need to get these sketches over to Gail on the, the team and see if they uh, see what their feedback is. Uh, part of the upper bed showed up. We need a couple more pieces to cut out. Um, so I need to prep what we could cut out with the material that we had, which are these overlays. And then I need to go pick up a full size sheet um, from our local uh, metal supply so that we can cut the full length side flanges. Yeah, walk with me. So we can cut the full length side flanges for the bed. In the meantime, Eric is staging the table because this is a six foot wide uh, piece on a four foot wide table. So we're staging it so we can go in and clamp up as much as we can of this piece when we go in and weld it because this thing is wobbly and I want to make it stiff. And it's during the day. This is unusual for me. It's usually after hours when I'm doing this kind of stuff, but there's no time for that. So more prep. So right now, I'm working on turning Matt's hood hinges that he did a simple version of for our mock-up into the final CNC billet versions. What I got here, all of the same geometry that he came up with for his crazy linkage, and now I've thickened them up. I'm adding some recesses, and instead of just through bolting all these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a ball bearing, we're gonna have some shoulder screws, we're gonna have 
some nice features here that are going to allow us to entirely capture that inner race of the bearing, just like you can see there. And that's going to allow us to have a much smoother operating hood linkage system. We're still working on it. As you can see, it's 942 right now. We're burning the midnight oil. We're trying to push, get these done and ready for SEMA. What do you got going on, Matt? Details, details, details. While Quinn is doing the hood hinges and that whole setup, I'm doing the bed hinges, turning that into parts that can be manufactured uh, in billet with bearings, but they've got even more load on them. This, this main arm for the bed hinge is, is, is long. And I think what I'm gonna try to do here is reuse the stock C20 Chevy hood hinges to open the bed. So I kind of like doing that kind of stuff, kind of reuse some parts, uh, repurpose them, uh, nice extension spring, pretty heavy spring, a lot of load, you know, get the right moment arm on it, detailing all that. Right now in the CAD here, we've got this sketch and I'm positioning things. I've got to get around all of our bed structure, make this thing actually work so that when we get to SEMA and we open everything up, you guys can look at it and go, that is badass. All right, so I just finished up this final sketch rendering. I really wanted to emphasize these fins around the perimeter of the wheel to draw your eye to it, but then also be functional and bring the air through the big windows and the spokes, but still keep that nostalgic look to the overall design. I think we've got a good direction going here. I gotta get this off to Gail and the team, but I'm gonna continue working on this a little bit and we'll check back with you guys soon. <laughs> All right, so what we got so far is The problem we're having right now is this flange on the tub that wrapped around uh, the original one, I don't want to do this, wrapped around like this on the top. And so now we have the bracing for the bottom is flat off the bottom. So the it's sitting here like that. So what we're doing is we're hammering out this flange flat so we can get these pieces to sit back to flat again. I don't know how he does this. Totally oh, must be ripped. <laughs> Their inner structure for the top half of the bed is mounted. Uh, we gotta, they gotta remake some aluminum pieces for the outside. And then you can just catch it with the diagram. But it is set and it's located by the shock mounts on the frame, so it's not gonna move. <laughs> of course. <laughs> bye bye, steak pocket. And it's where it needs to be, and the outside of the bed is where it needs to be. So what we're gonna do is we can go ahead and start making our tubs. And when we make our tubs, we'll get all the patterns and we'll have the flanges, but we're just not gonna drill any of the holes until everything's final mounted. And then once they have everything final mounted and it working, tilting and all that fun stuff, then they can go ahead and uh, drill through holes to bolt the tubs down. And then the wood will sit on top of that. It might have been nice to have a new clear windshield in the truck. That's okay, we'll put the old green one in. There you go, there's a new old glass installed. Let's tuck that rubber right there. All right, back windows installed. I love the original old factory air condition sticker. This had to have been an option loaded truck when it was brand new. You don't see those original stickers too often anymore. It's a really nice touch. All right, so you guys need tubs for the back of the lot job. I think I have you. All right, I think these will work great. 